Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave and waking up for a very, very early Sunday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. Getting warmer, and you know what? I always want to be wishing you well. I want to be wishing you the best of the best. Before I forget to say, um, the <laughs> you might notice that there's a new light going on right now. So I just wanted to say that anyone who has any sort of suggestions for a stream like this, for a video like this, please feel free to reach out. I'm always looking for for upgrades. Uh, this one, credit to LaFrog in the Discord. I had no idea how much difference uh, actual proper light would make. So again, if you, you know, if you, if you might be a streamer yourself, you know your way around the audio visual uh, section of a electronic store please feel free to please feel free to reach out because I'm always down to talk so uh, with that said because it is a Sunday we will be talking about some more long-term analysis for today so let's waste no more time and get in a live stream right over here as always wishing the best the best baby okay as you can see Bitcoin done nothing done absolutely fucking nothing it is a holiday weekend in america so actually gbdc will not be trading tomorrow so i'm gonna imagine it's probably gonna be a little bit more of nothing but uh but we do have cme futures opening later today overall this just one massive piece of consolidation i am starting to feel a little bit more strongly about it though um, as it does spend more and more time around in this area, yes, technically speaking, from a more traditional stance, you do not want to be short as long as uh, Bitcoin is above that yellow 21 exponential, which is now actually sloped to the upside. How, I, I mean, I should say a little bit more aggressively than before. And also, you have the red 10 symbol move and have a trading above it as well. And we seem to be using it as support. We did close above it yesterday. But my point is, and really the and, and really the focus on a video like this is the consolidation as a whole. You know, whatever happens during this consolidation is kind of irrelevant to me. It is a it is there are significant signals saying that this is a bearish consolidation. There are significant signals actually saying that this, you know, we very well could be getting to uh, an actual local high rel uh, relatively soon as well. Now, of course, with every sort of analysis, there is, you know, there there's a counterpoint to it. No doubt about that. I'll be presenting that as well. You know, how do I know when I'm going to be wrong on this? Because I actually do have a trade going on right now um, from above 36, uh, 36 or what is it? Yeah, 36, 20, 36, 30, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, but overall, you know, this, this price action, extremely corrective. You have the volume falling off from left to right that tells us that this is just all one piece of consolidation if we bring up our if we bring up our um our oscillators right here the 12 hour stokes have gotten the the peaks and troughs very very well so i'll be using them and focusing on them and you can see over here that actually the last peak uh coming at the behest of this resistance trend line that we formed so it turned right down at the actual 36 uh 36 like 50 mark essentially which to me is you know is that is a local high until it is not now yes bitcoin does seem to be you know gearing up right now and and like I said, it's not like it's a one, you know, it, it, it's a one sided thing. But for me, you know, the longer that it spends uh, putting it in sideways here, actually, the worse it does look. So anyways, looking at something like this, um, we do see a very obvious resistance trend line forming or formed. I mean, three touches does make a trend going all the way back to uh, to late December. That's again, this has got all of the peaks in this consolidation. So so late December, early January, and now so far early February. As long as it, as long as we are below thirty six fifty, that is what I will I will refer to this as. But that also means that Bitcoin can get back all the way to thirty six fifty. This horizontal resistance trend line right here, which now actually does meet with this ascending trend line that's been governing the lower highs ever since, <laughs> ever since. Um, uh, late November and uh, and and still not change anything. So you know if, if there's going to be some more weekend uh, fuckery afoot, well you know uh, a, a move back to test 3650 is certainly not out of the question. In fact, it actually kind of looks like it wants to. As you see it curl around, you're getting all sorts of really good exponential movement average crosses um, on, on on even some decent time frames like this 12 hour right here. So again, I would you know I, I would put extreme importance on this area. This is the area of battle essentially for the bulls. As long as the bulls are below 3650, it's just another lower high. It's just another Another, another piece of this more aggressively bearish consolidation. However, if it does break above that area, if it does break above 3650, then I'd be looking towards about 3850 to 3900, and then probably for you know most likely 4000 is what I'd really be looking at. Uh, I know people, you could you could um, relate this consolidation something like this. Perhaps um, getting this peak, that peak, and that peak, and that there are some things to be said about that. But the reason why I'm using this guy over here is because the most volume had been done on him, and it's still the best fits regression line. Um, anyways, the resistance trend line on this guy would be coming in around 30, 3750. So if things were to take off above there, I mean, it, it sounds a little bit disingenuous to say like, oh, well, you have one at 3750, and then 3850, and then 4000. It's like every fucking hundred dollars, right? That's not too helpful. Um, but we are in a pretty tight consolidation, and I did want to briefly 
briefly mention that. I don't really think that that's the right way to be doing it, though. Um, the way that I the, the the way that I'm presenting first and foremost, and the way that I have been presenting first and foremost, is the right way that I believe, uh, or, 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 or or my first interpretation, I, I should say. So again, as long as Bitcoin's below this area, thirty six fifty, I am interpreting this as a bearishly uh, as as a bearishly induced consolidation over the past three months. Uh, basically, basically showing best by the twelve hour Stokes getting the highs so damn well. Um, within this context, you can see that this last one actually just slowly but surely shuffling it down below and, and kind of guiding it below the bearish control or sorry, the bullish control zone. So what does that tell us? It tells us as the consolidation gets more and more mature, you know, the bears are taking over or they're, or they're taking over faster, as you'd imagine. Anyways, back onto the daily. I do want to show a couple things here. Daily Jewel did get into the area that has actually found tops uh, going all the way back to uh, to late September, except for this one off that we had in late December right here. But as you can see, anytime it gets around this this market, which is essentially a fib number, um, it uh, it has seemed to have called tops. So again, this was you know your November right before right before six thousand to three thousand. Essentially, this this one up above here was basically the forty two hundred top. This was your forty one hundred top in early January, and then we've once again gone in this area. Again, it's not perfect, but it does it, it does look interesting to me. Um, obviously, we do have good confl confluences with our fibs over here, resting on the six one eight. You know, technically speaking, as long as Bitcoin's above the six one eight. It's. I, I don't really see any reason to be aggressive in this. Um, I don't really see uh, any reason to be aggressive. And really, from a more traditional stance, this has all the markings of th of something that actually does want to test higher. Um, at the very, I mean, <laughs> at the very least, probably the 0.5, which you can also notice is the daily 55 exponential. Which, you know, that's just, this is why I have a lot of these inputs in is because they match up with the fibs essentially. You see the 618 matching up with the 21. You see the 786, well, mat not matching up with anything, but matching up with our with our basically our, our lowest support down around here. So, you know, the story at large has not changed at all, and that's. Why this video is going to be focusing more on long-term analysis but basically you know what do the bulls want to take out in order to actually change the lower time frames 3650 what do the what do the bears want to take out to change the bigger time frames uh 3350 would actually would actually do something could because then we'd be resolving this do you want to call it a pennant do you want to call it a uh, a, a bear or descending triangle whatever the fuck it is you know typically a bearishly resolved pattern and uh in looking at this guy right now um, the 786 does seem to be the area of contention. Yes, if it does break, you know, you do have supports down around, you know, your prior low is 3250. But I, I don't believe that that, I think that that's just going to be a bounce, but it's probably going to fail if that would happen. The big area for the bears to break is 3350, and I feel very strongly about that. For the bulls, I don't feel strongly about this 3650 being the area to break. I don't think that the bull market, what I'm trying to say is I don't believe that the bull market starts if Bitcoin actually takes out that area. And right now, I, you know, as long as Bitcoin's below it, I'm going to be going with the former, with the former interpretation of it until it doesn't work essentially i'm you know a, a bearish thing in a bearish market i'm always going to go with the fucking downwards resolution of it just like a bullish thing in a bullish market i'm always going to go with the upwards resolution of that um but hey if this if this area does get taken out 3650 it could have implications for something that actually does matter and the thing and the areas that do matter to me are first and foremost the weekly 200 exponential moving average this guy right over here this purple moving average which is all the way at 4100 as long as bitcoin is both opening and closing weekly doles below it i don't believe that we have any real we, we haven't really changed anything Thing from a higher time frame perspective as far as i'm concerned you can see that this has been given in our lower highs ever since bitcoin uh began this more aggressive descent and then also just as important perhaps even more important because it is a higher time frame the monthly over here but the monthly you know obviously takes a month to be fucking resolved and we still got what like another 10 11 days i believe is there 28 days in, in uh, february this this month i don't know um but yeah uh, you see the green 55 exponential is coming in right around uh, 3650, essentially 3669, uh, you know, but it's same, same fucking area to me as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Bitcoin broke for the first time in its history, literally in its history uh, last month in January, closing its first monthly total below if it both opens and closes below this month, which again, it did open below. So it will have a chance to close below, just has to close below 3669. Um, then I will confirm that the first, I, I would consider that the first confirmed kill of the green 55 exponential. And yes, that is when I start looking down towards this 89 exponential, basically into the mid two thousands, which will, which will explore a lot more during this video. Um, but basically the way that this is set up is certainly a lot more bearish than anything else. But remember on a monthly, it just needs to close below there. So if we actually did get a wick above, if we, you know, if, if Bitcoin went to, you know, even 4,000 and, and then ended the month back below 3669, then 
that would be completely fine from a monthly standpoint. This would just look like consolidation, as you can see, just lower high, just literally the wick of each of, of each dildo is lower, uh, starting from July of last year, 2018. Um, and this guy over here just kind of, you know, obviously it would be considered a consolidation as these moving averages approach each other. If they were to cross, then that's going to be the impetus for bots and algos intensifying their selling. That is, you know, that's going to be the next leg most likely. Um, so again, just kind of laying out what it can look like in the future but remember this is something that's going to take you know it's going to take what the, what the fuck's going on with my phone over here um uh that's something that's going to take time because we're looking at a monthly right now and you know quite literally it takes one fucking month to put in one dildo on this guy right um anyways go back on to mr bitcoin uh that pretty much gets it for the higher time frames i mean if we really want to do a quick blaze through the uh through the lower time frames there is something very interesting here for the bulls there's something very interesting here for the bulls there is a four hour golden cross right around the horizon if bitcoin can can essentially keep the price action here or higher in the next i would say in the next like day or two uh, you know, and, and if there's a rally, it will get the golden cross. It will. Um, and let me just remind you what happened the last time we got the golden cross. Uh, this was an aversion of the golden cross, but the last time we actually had a golden cross, we actually, we've hinted at one a couple times, but it was averted each and every time. Does it get averted again? It's a real question. Um, when was the last time we actually had one? Right over here in August of uh, August of 2018. Um, a nice move off that actually, uh, eight, you know, 10%. I mean, that's that's kind of a lackluster one. The one before that is typically, you know, is, is kind of what, what I would be looking for. And that was about, you know, a 30%, 25 to 30% move. So to put that in perspective, if Bitcoin were to get, I, again, this does not imply that it's going to get a 30% move. But if it does get that cross, you know, do I want to be short? <laughs> Fuck no. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, just put it back, put it in perspective. You know, twenty five percent off the current off the current area would be about forty five hundred. So I do know that you know if you are looking at this as a pennant of of sorts, which yes is more likely to break out to the downside. Not always going to break out to the downside, but certainly more likely um, as far as statistics go. Uh, if it did break out to the upside, the measure move on this baby would be pointing where. I mean, right around that 4,500 mark that we just kind of spoke about. By the same token, if it does break out to the downside, which I do believe is more more likely. Um, then it does have a much move down around here towards 23 to 2400. Remember, that would be consistent with what we just looked at on the monthly. So again, um, that is, you know, that, uh, that is something of great interest right now because we have not seen one quite literally in, you know, like I said, about, uh, about half a year. And if it were to happen, likely going to likely going to have some severe implications um typically these things get averted like at the last second if it is going to get averted and you do see a very similar signature in price action here where bitcoin was consolidating albeit not as long as we've been doing over here and they kissed the 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 green the green 55 and the purple 200 are the are the moving averages in question by the way um and then at the very last second red dildo party just shoves it right back down and says fuck you and actually has uh some good continuation off that so again um is that what we're looking at right now I mean, am I going to take a four hour dildo time frame uh, over other higher time frames? I mean, no, I do put more importance on higher time frames, no doubt about that. But this is of note. And if that, you know, if you were to get that golden cross, I'm going to very likely think that you do take out this resistance here. And it's, and I don't think that you're going to stop at 3850. I don't think that you're going to stop at 3900. I think that you probably find your next big resistance around 4000 is probably what's more likely. Um, and maybe even maybe even beyond. And then maybe we have something new to consider. But for now, you know, the higher time frames are speaking pretty relatively clearly, relatively clearly. So I would um, I would put a lot of importance on that and uh, and just keep this in the back of the mind as something that is, you know, certainly potentially pot uh, potential to happen. But. I'm not. Um, again, you know, it's it, it, it's 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 just dis it's just dubious because I want to I want to distance myself from a lot of the YouTubers who you know you, okay you you have like different classes of YouTubers you have the ones that just don't know anything that just they read Investpedia yesterday and then they fucking you know they portray themselves as an authority. Then you have the people who have a little bit of experience but have never fucking made a dollar trading. Then you have the people who are literally calling out every fucking possible potential move and then acting like they fucking quote unquote called it when it actually does happen which i don't want to be i want to actually give a little bit of okay well this is what i think is going to happen but you know here's what i look for and if that's going to be wrong which is all trading is it's statistical setup that is what real trading is and that is how i try to and that is that is the way that i like to verify myself and, and separate myself um 
but uh, but 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 basically that's essentially what I have for the lower time frames on Bitcoin and the medium time frames. Again, nothing's changed here. You know, any video that you've seen in the last uh, in the last week is going to be essentially the same. Um, but uh, but yeah, looking like Bitcoin's actually poking its head up right now. Lower time frame oscillators are actually showing a little bit. Uh, were they showing exhaustion? Not really. Uh, four hours still pointed up. What about three hour? Three hour is snaking around, but technically up right now. Uh, what about six hours? Six hours still gaining momentum up. Eight hours still gaining momentum up. Tw 10 hours still gaining momentum up. It's just the 12 hour and daily that are down. Uh, two day and three day are up as well. Actually, if you want to, uh, if you want, if we want to quickly just take a look at these guys. Yeah, two day is getting right back to the neutral zone. So, you know, if, if resistance is going to be found, I would imagine it's probably gonna be somewhere right around there. Three day is just getting started, actually. I mean, it is, you know, it's a three day deal time frame. So uh, weekly and four day are actually still down, by the way. We Weekly, we will be getting another tick later tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time, or sorry, 7 p.m. Eastern time, and you can see that it is still actually gaining momentum to the downside, so that is quite concerning as well. Uh, Bitcoin will be battling for the red tenths of moon average today, obviously, and if we do want to go back on over to GBTC, which again will not be will not be trading until Tuesday, I believe. Um, again, uh, U.S. is on holiday. They actually did close the week below the red tenths of moon average, and one of the things why I'm actually very hesitant to be bearish right now. Um, and why why I'm hesitant to put on like a real position? I don't have a real position on right now. I have like a I have like a quarter to a half position, uh, again from 3620 uh, um, that I'll be holding as long as we're below 3600. As long as we're closing hourly deals below 3600, I hold that. Again, it's just a trade. Um, and if it gets above, then I'll reposition probably <laughs> maybe at 4000. Um, so again, you know, looking at this area, we actually did close it daily above the yellow 20 month expansion, which to me kind of speaks a lot. Now, of course, when we, we need to wait, we need we need to wait for Tuesday to see what actually happens if we get continuation if we actually take out the high of this guy then things get a little bit more interesting yes you will still have your former highs as resistance that's going to line up with spot being around 3700 i'd imagine by the same token if you take out the low then that would be a pretty damn clear signal as well we're probably gonna revisit lows so you know sorry and i i, I think i forgot to mention that on spot as well um, spot, you know, you have your 30, you have your 3550 support right here at 3530, whatever you want to call it. Basically the 618 Fibonacci retracement is where we've been finding support around also, you know, the 200 exponential on the four hour. Uh, if, if Bitcoin loses that, I believe it's probably going to, you know, it's, it's probably going to nosedive back to its prior lows at 3350, 3400. Uh, technically speaking, yes, you do have support at 3485, but it's probably just going to be a balance, probably going to get sold into if that, you know, if this critical area were to be taken uh, off of. So again, bulls need to defend this area, bears need to attack this area area and uh and bears need to defend this area and bulls need to attack this area That's, those are the two areas of you know of of actual signaling something new going on until that happens just more consolidation within the context of this of this overall bearish formation but in a very very tight area um so yeah uh, tight like a tiger baby uh, also keep in mind cme futures which will be opening tonight they will be traded later today uh did close the week at 3560 so they close the week at 3560. So that means that there's going to be kind of like a, I don't want to say that there's a magnet. I don't want to imply that there is going to be like, I don't want to imply that, 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 that spot prices have to go exactly to this point right when they open. I don't want to imply that because that's not true, but typically speaking, every, every gap in, in regular market history has been filled and in Bitcoin history so far, it's been pretty damn good as well. Um, in fact, I don't believe I've found one that's been unfilled and, Typically in Bitcoin land, they do get filled faster, uh, sooner rather than later. But there are instances where it's actually taken a month. Uh, I would imagine on something like this, it's not going to be one of those ones where it takes a month unless if it's actually going to be a gap up. Um, but I, again, I, I think that's less likely. Uh, remember that, you know, daily on CME futures did close as a nice rejection off this horizontal trend line. And by the way, the CME futures are a little bit easier to read. I believe they, we have a very obvious ascending triangle. I don't believe that it is a, a, a pennant or anything like that. Uh, the volume pictures are very consistent with that. We do have that nice orderly drop off in volume. You see that, you know, going from left to right, we do see basically, uh, basically as far as I'm concerned, another rejection of this area, another, another brush against the overall resistance. Resistance, and we do have our daily stokes getting back into this area, which has actually stopped each and every last high since November. Sorry, not even November, October. So October high, November high, right, right before you know six thousand, three thousand. This was your this was your late December high from forty two. This was your early January high from forty one, and we're right now again in this area, and this will be opening up later tonight. So again, you know, and after a rejection like this, I. 
I would, I would believe that we'd probably have something, you know, <laughs> most likely, most likely the next move down. We also do have some hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point, very slight and very subtle. Um, maybe if we put on a two day, it'll be a little bit more pronounced. Nope. We don't even have it on a two day actually. Yeah. We don't even have it on a two day. So be a little bit more careful with that then. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, CME futures uh, would actually be the, would, would, would be a better signal just because you don't have to wait as long. And I do believe that they have more, they hold more clout. You know, it, it means more um, if Bitcoin would actually take out an area on this, on this guy. So when they do open up at 6 p.m. Eastern and time later tonight, then uh, then keep your eyes on this 3620 area. If it actually does start closing some higher level dollars above there, then, you know, look for a spot to take a leg up. Um, by the same token, you know, obvious support is right here, 35.20 on CMEs, uh, 30, wait, is it 35? Yeah, 35.25, we could call it. Second it breaks out, probably back down to form lows. Technically, yes, you have support at 34.50, but you're probably gonna break it after that. You, you're not gonna you're not gonna spend uh, eight to nine days consolidating this area just to like, just dip a little bit lower and then, and then just rally back. Uh, very unlikely. The next, the, the the break, the resolution of this consolidation is likely going to be the next big direction. Um, we spent a lot of time in this area, a lot, a lot of time. Also, you know, some of our some of our higher time frame, um, you know, uh, what do, what do we want to call these? I guess I'll just call it. I'll just I guess I'll just use the actual real name. But the historical volatility rank does have great insight into what we're doing right now as well. And you can see that this is getting pretty damn low. It's almost at that point one, that not point one area that does line up with some pretty massive moves happening. Also, do you want to bring up some underlying market dynamics going on right now as well? The longs and shorts. Longs are at 35,600. Actually, let's go check what it is in real time. Actually, 35,800. 35, Oops, this is not relevant, um, but 35,800 on longs. So almost 36,000 uh, open longs. Again, anytime it gets above this this horizontal trend line that I currently have in, um, that is too many people on the bus syndrome. It can certainly take a long time to, to stay above there, but it is on my radar of you know a potential major dump time. Compare that with the shorts, which had, which did add in the last day. Uh, certainly not as much, but a, a little bit below 24,000. I think a few thousand of those are hedged. So we probably have somewhere around 20,000 uh, open shorts. Let's just go check really quick. Yeah, about, yeah, literally 20 and a half thousand open shorts, uh, naked, um, uh, and looking at this guy right here, you know, it's down around that area where it typically does line up with major dumps as well, because right now the bulls are using a shit ton of their dry ammo to go in dry. And the bears haven't really responded at all, and bit and Bitcoin is is below that critical resistance that we just spoke about. I mean, not even a critical resistance, but the first preliminary resistance. Remember, there's three big ones. There are there's one that we're looking at right now, which is about thirty six fifty on spot. Then there is the weekly two hundred exponential, and then there's the monthly green fifty five exponential. Bitcoin isn't taking out any of them right now, and it's historically speaking on the higher side for longs. I mean, uh, you know, it's 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 gotten up around to forty thousand before, but thirty six is pretty fucking big. Uh, this is you know similar setup to what you had on your breakage as far as ratio wise uh, before six thousand or three thousand shorts over here. Again, anytime it gets to, to like the low twenty thousands, which typically like below twenty thousand, not above twenty thousand, which we are above twenty thousand right now. Uh, it does line up with the major dumps. You know, this spike, this spike low over here was your March highs. You know, before before that major dump from about twelve thousand to six thousand. This was your May highs from ten thousand to six thousand. This was your you know early August. Uh, sorry, early yeah early August dump from eight thousand to six thousand. This was your early September dump from seventy four to six thousand. This was your November dump from six thousand to three thousand. And we're once again in this range, so that is of note as well. You know, putting piecing together the underlying market dynamics does kind of help around out the case here let's also bring up the crypto fear and greed index which is ticking out of 43 if you remember it was a four it was like a 48 or 52 the other day um it was the highest that it's been in, in a very long time yeah it got all the way to 48 um which uh, this is represented on a chart now and in a bear market the the more the the higher the value is going to represent is better at getting highs rather than a low value getting the lows now the low values do i mean when it's a very low value you do put in a low but you can stay at that low value you know for a month at a time i mean that's what it was in august that's what it was in december december literally was just down i mean from from mid to, from mid november to mid december was straight down and then literally this this is the turnaround right here and just you know december 18th and then it goes back up all the way to 33 <laughs> or what is this yeah 36 uh we just ticked a 48 
you can see that there's actually a very nice uh, regression line that you could fit throughout all these tops, which guess what? This is also, these are also tops on price action. This was your, you know, your February highs. This was your May highs. This was your, you know, uh, July highs. This was your, well, we have one right here, obviously. This was your September dump. This was your November dump. This was, you know, the high in, uh, in January. And then we just put in another level around this guy at around the 48 marker. So, you know, it, 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 it is interesting to me right now. We are at a major inflection point. I, you know, I'm going to always go with the former trend as the trend is your friend until the end of the trend has been winning for the last fucking year. So I'm going to, you know, go with that one. But, uh, but Hey, if, you know, if we actually do take a leg up here, things will, things, you could actually be in the initial etchings of something changing around, which I think is unlikely. And the reason why I think it's unlikely is because now we'll start to get into, into why I don't believe Bitcoin is bottomed. So, to explain why Bitcoin is bottom, I first need to explain, um, and we're going to go through like actual examples. We'll, we'll do like the full fucking, the full kit and caboodle if you want to use some sort of saying that probably no one understands. Um, but, but basically, uh, what am I trying to say? So with Bitcoin, why do I believe it's not bottom? Well, to understand that, we need to understand that market cycles amongst different assets are pretty damn similar in a way. They have principles that relate to each other, and then each and every little asset trades and it's like its own little personality within the governance of those rules. I don't even want to call them rules. I want to call them like guidelines. Um, but I've noticed this amongst all different assets, whether it's, you know, whether it's commodities, uh, Forex, whether it's, uh, you know, where I come from as an equity options market maker, whether it's magic and money and what we're looking at right now, market cycles are pretty damn consistent. Why is that? Because basically we're dealing with humans. We're dealing with human irrationality. We're dealing with human imperfectness. We are dealing with human, you know, emotions, emotional, the, the, the psychology of the market, which we all all pretty much share. I mean, even a bot is programmed by what? He's programmed by a fucking emotional human. So in some degree, he is, you know, those, those bot, those algorithmic um, activities are in a way, you know, they're programmed, programmed behaviors, right? So we can see these very similar, uh, similar behaviors over time. Bitcoin has a very, a very unique personality in the way that it plays out its market cycles because it's just so fucking violent, but it does still rely within the guidelines of, um, of, of, what, of, of what we look at. So what I look at for a major market cycle low is first things first, I want to see major volume being thrown down on the actual low. Now, I know I'm on Bitstamp right now, but you know, this this is essentially consistent for all, you know, so, someone gave me, uh, so, someone was saying, Crown, why do you use Bitstamp? No one uses that exchange. It's like, okay, we'll look at the chart over here. Does it look anything different than this guy over here? This is GDAX. Does it look anything other different than, than, uh, than Finex over here? Okay. Does it even look anything different than Japan? Not really. Does it look anything different? Well, Korea is going to look different because Korea is, Bullshit exchange too. Um, this is this is OK Cone futures. This is not going to really work out. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean this is completely completely different. But but yeah, going back on over here to Bitstamp, you know, do we have the volume consistent with what I want to see on a major market cycle low for Bitcoin? I mean. To understand this, you need to understand the way that Bitcoin has its personality. And usually when it puts in its major market cycle lows, it has a massive volume spike in relation to what you did in your parabolic cycle over here. So I'm looking for something analogous to this guy over here, some you know, somewhere somewhere in the future, most likely. Well, it's not in the fucking past. Uh, as you can see right now, it's significantly lower. And this is much and this is incredibly significantly lower. Why do I say that? Because, well, this is measured in coins traded, not dollars traded. So when Bitcoin is literally three to four times the price in, you know, last year, uh, it is you don't need to put on as many coins to have the same sort of exposure. So so this is really significantly lower. Um, not, a, you know, what we really have is something a lot similar to this guy over here in relation to this guy over here, which look at the price action right there. You know, that was obviously not your low. Anyways, um, the time spent at the low is also not really consistent with the way that Bitcoin puts in its lows. Bitcoin spent at the current low, one, two, three, four days at the low. As far as capitulation goes, we actually do have an example. We have two examples of tw in 2018, but one very obvious one, and that was in February of 2018. And the way that Bitcoin plays out its 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 lows is that it spends like a le literally less than a day there, but I'm, I have it on a daily dollar time frame right now, and then it rallies up 35 fucking percent within that day, which brings me to, to my next point. Bitcoin over this whole period has rallied up like, you know, 25 percent over the course of literally 12 weeks or 13 weeks now compare that with one day 35 percent 25 percent 12 13 weeks one day and this is really done in the span of like four hours uh by the way we also have another example of capitulation obviously in the 2014 mark cycle over here and you have the same sort of thing right you have the same sort of thing where within one day it the price of bitcoin goes up almost 40 percent 40 fucking percent again one day 
13 weeks. We actually have another example of what capitulation could be like. People, uh, I might get some shit for this one, but this is actually true. I do believe this, but from, but from 20,000 to 10,000 in the span of uh, like four days, that was what capitulation can feel like. And Bitcoin, again, how much does it bounce up? About 37% in the span of a day. So again, you know, the time spent at the low, not consistent. The percentage bounce off the low, not consistent. The volume spent off the low, not consistent. Look at the volume over here, by the way. Um, also, what else do we have to look at? Let's look at the MBT signal, and I'm going to bring be bringing up a lot of uh, a lot of novel things now. Some more some more uh, work from my man Willie Wu. Actually, don't know Willie Wu. I'd love to have him on the on the show sometimes. Or sorry, let's actually talk about the historical volatility rank while we're here. Historical volatility rank. If you're not familiar with it, it's basically a mean reverting oscillator that oscillates between zero and one. It tells you that. If you're at a major inflection point in the market that is essentially you know reverting back to a mean price over you know a period of of, of of price action essentially what it basically tells you is that when it's out of one you're probably done with the move when you're at a zero you're probably due for a major fucking move as you can see on the current low on bitcoin this thing never got up that high it got up to a 0.66 which compare that with our major inflection points before which just because it takes a one on these things when it flashes the color just because it takes a one does not mean that it's the ultimate high or the ultimate low but it is a major high or a major low you can see that it did a, a, at this february low right here uh 20 000 high right here this low over here this high right here this low this high right here this low right here this uh low right here this high right here, this low right here, the ultimate low of 2014, 2015 mark cycle. Again, a lot of things within there. Now, so so you, so you can kind of get the uh, the signaling of that. By the way, this is also descending as well. So telling us that this consolidation probably getting resolved pretty damn soon. Doesn't usually stay this low. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna click this guy off now. Let's get on to the MVT signal. MVT signal is has a perfect history of calling the of of calling the bottoms in Bitcoin's history. Every, each and every single time it's flashed a green, it has either been a major bottom or an actual market cycle bottom, like never going lower, bro. That kind of shit. And looking at this guy, uh, what's going on? My Jesus Christ, my phone's going crazy right now. Um, and looking at this guy right now, you can see that do we flash a green? Do we flash a buy signal on this guy? Uh, as far as this goes, no. We are literally above 100 right now. Uh, it actually did flash a green on the 6,000 low um, in February. Again, it was obviously not the mark cycle low, but it was a major low. It, Bitcoin rallied 100% off that area within the span of a week or, a week or two after that. Uh, called, the, called, called the turnaround and obviously called the low of the last market cycle, 2014, 2015. Called the low right here, that spike low, and called the low of the mark cycle prior right here and right here. So again, uh, um, a little literal perfect history of calling these things and not even giving not even really getting that close to the bottoming area in the 20 in the 2018 2019 setup so far um, we are above the 100 area and again this flash is green below 50 so put that into context we are actually moving up higher right now on the MBT signal and price actions making lower highs so we're actually experiencing just some divergence between this as well, which is not good. Now, can we can we elongate that? Can we elongate that divergence? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. That doesn't mean that that things are turning around right here right now. But I do see but I do see a lot of similarities between again the areas that we looked at on the weekly, which was this area and this area to each other. Now, of course, if you're looking at this area, you're going to say, "Well, crown, we have another higher high in order." And I'd say, you know what? I'm, maybe that maybe that is in the cards. Maybe that is in the cards where Bitcoin does break this area to the upside, and then we do see that run to four thousand or, or whatever it is, or maybe a little bit above four thousand. Um, but there's a lot of there. Uh, there, uh, there are a lot of similarities. I don't necessarily believe this sort of shit. I don't like. I don't care about fractals. I think fractals are silly. I think that they're very misleading. I think that you know it's it's very misleading because at some point they will actually work out, but they will not work out a million times before actually working out. So I see a lot of. I don't see. I, I don't. I don't know anyone who's rich as fuck using fractals. I'll put it that way. I'll put it that way, man. <laughs> That's the easiest way to put it. Just like Elliot Wave. I don't know anyone who's rich as fuck who only uses Elliot Waves. And yes, I've been on. I've been an actual mark maker on the floor of New York Stock Exchange, ARCA, and then later above Chicago Boards Office Exchange. And been around some of the best traders in the world. No one fucking uses it, man. From all different from all different firms as well, man. Not just not just my own. In fact, I mean these were pretty open spaces. So, you know, 
Um, looking at this area over here, though, maybe maybe there is something like that in the cars. There is there is a lot of similarity between this. Look at the volume characteristics on this guy in comparison to this guy. Look at the volume characteristics on this guy in comparison to your parabolic cycle right over here. Also, look at what got us into this area. You had a descending triangle breaks down, and you have like a, what a 50 52 percent drop down right over there. And we have a descending triangle right over here breaks down. We have another 50 you know 52 percent drop down right over there. Then we bounce up. We bounce up. We already did this, but basically you know 25 percent and balance up right there and then we did this guy on this guy right over here you know what was it like a 20 you know 25 percent balance right over here as well done over the course of you know this one was 12 weeks before rolling over and we've done about 13 weeks over here and yes i do believe that this market cycle is going to take longer things will take longer when there's more people involved and there's certainly more people involved in bitcoin in 2019 than there were in 2014 um and then also funnily enough on the mvt signal if we do go back on over and look at this guy again, the net the 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 MVT signal is the network value divided by the daily transaction value, and then interpolated using forward, backwards, ninety day smooth, and move an average, which means that it, you know again just calls the tops and bottoms pretty damn well. Uh, but in the same area, and again, this is the area in question that we're looking at. Um, the MVT signal was right around the same area, it's around this this ninety marker. And in fact, it put in this high at the one eleven. I'm actually going to mark off the high on this. I've not done this before. Um, it doesn't make a higher high over the prior spike, but it does get right around here and lows somewhere around this 86. So let's actually fast forward to 2019. And you can see that we're, yeah, we're actually somewhere right around this range. You do see the same kind of signature somewhere around this 110 mark. Maybe it's, you know, you can see some resistance right there perhaps, but something like that. So could that, you know, could, could that imply that we have another leg here? Perhaps, perhaps, but it, it, you know, my point is, is that I don't care if we have another leg or not. What I care about is, is the bottom end. And it's, <laughs> we're so far, we're zero for five. Um, or th sorry, we're zero for, s we're, 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 we're about to be zero for fucking six because I'm about to show you this. Okay, um, as far as mark cycles go, you don't want the asset returning to the low because what really is a mark cycle low or a mark cycle top is basically when the big boys decide to buy with extremely deep pockets will come in and set a floor. How do they set a floor? Well, they buy a shit ton of money. Imagine market buying, you know, half a billion to a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. I mean, it, it's going to destroy the market at, at current price right now, but you need a lot, of, a lot of overhead liquidity. And when you actually do get your order in, you're going to cause something like this, or you're going to cause something like this, and everyone's going to fucking know. And then everyone jumps in. So that, so understand the perspective of that market mover as someone who needs to accumulate as much as possible. And they know that everyone else will know when they jump in because they're, you know, they're going to make, make some massive waves. And, um, and, 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 and so if they get in, Price action is not going to be returning that uh, right around to that low ever again. You see it in 2014 right here. You see the spike low, the wick, the wick over here. Price action gets within about 44 percent of it. <laughs> uh, it's uh, test this area a significant amount of times, but ultimately it does not. It does not take that area out. Compare that with what we've done here in 2019, where we are about we got within about six and a half percent of the lows. Uh, that's questionable. That's fucking questionable. So, yeah, um, there's also another thing kind of going around right now, which I think is interesting. We can quickly look at it. Uh, let's put on a 100, 200 and 300. But basically, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly go over this. I don't really care all that much about it, but we'll take everything else off. And the 100, 200 and uh, three and 300. So basically, there's some weird thing going on where Bitcoin bottomed out on the 100 exponential on the weekly. Sorry, the one of the 100 simple moving average on the weekly on the first. Uh, uh, let, I'll just fucking show it. Jesus Christ, man. All right. So the red is 100 simple moving average. You can see that that's kind of where Bitcoin did bottom out on the first market cycle. Then on the second market cycle, it bottoms out at three at, at, at the 200 simple moving average right here. This is represented by the pink now. And then the 300 simple moving average is this blue line right here. Maybe if we put on like a 75, it'll get the other one. Let's put on this guy and let's put, let's make him like a, maybe a 75 because that's half or what's half of 150. Sorry. Uh, that makes me look a complete fucking moron. Maybe I just am. I am. Uh, there we go. Okay. 50. Yeah. 50 is not really getting anything. Hmm. Oh, well, you just play around with it until it works. Right. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, around the same area, right. Uh, we can get rid of that now. It's pretty irrelevant, but you, you know, you kind of see the overall feeling of that. Now let's, let's get to the actual nitty gritty of this. Where's that 300 simple moving average coming in around? 
2315. So now you, if you've been listening to this, if you've been, if you've been paying attention to this, uh, to the stream for a while now, you, you know, you, you know, we have the monthly 89 in the 20, in the 2400 range. We have this 300 simple moon average that we just looked at in the 200 range. We also have the measure move off the, off the descending triangle around that again, uh, 23, 24, 2500 range. And then we also have a few other things. If we put back on, if we put back on everything else, Jesus Christ, man. Let's get let's get all this. But basically, I'll, I'll show this blue moving average down here. This is a 377 exponential, which is very important in traditional markets. Where is that coming around? Actually, a little bit higher at 2600. But if we do if if we do put on all of our uh, drawing tools here, take everything else off, you know, you do see that this that this area is encompassed by the blue box. Essentially, is what I made between 23 and 2600. It's also the 8 to 6 Fibonacci retracement, which is bit which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014. And you can also see that um, you, we have some nice historical whole, horizontal trend lines coming around there. And also, the volume profile is showing some major activities, some major business being done in this area. Historically speaking, you also notice that as soon as we lose the 3300 level, there ain't nothing doing to that area. So again. Um, great importance right here great great importance um so a lot of things coming around that area and that is where i'd be looking towards if this area did indeed fail which i suppose is what this is all getting towards right now but let's actually put all these guys back on there we go all right so nice so nice and uh and serene right now close your eyes imagine the charts falling at rapid speed imagine bitcoin losing all kinds of value imagine everyone being shish by a massive red dildo imagine <laughs> i fucking hate that meme when people say imagine not doing this like wow super creative man super fucking creative <laughs> imagine thinking for your fucking self um Anyways, uh, yeah, that's I, th I think that kind of covers up where the next car target that I'd be looking for if if this thirty three fifty support did fail. However, this is not guaranteed to be the ultimate low, and I don't have a strong opinion on that. I want to see the reaction first. That's the only way to do it. That's the only fucking way to do it because I need to I need to see I need to see actual visual evidence that the that the big boy is in. I don't want to I don't want fucking crypto Twitter's opinion on it. I don't want crypto Reddit's opinion on it. They've been calling the bottom ever since 6,000. Every I mean, they've been calling the bottom ever since like fucking here, you know, um, since 10,000. So again, those were those were more happy times now, weren't they? But hey, well, you can't can't go back in the past now. Uh, so yeah, you know, if that area did fail, then I'd start looking towards 1869. And if that area failed, then yeah, then I'd join the super bears down around 1,000, maybe even below. Um, let's go check out some more Willy Woo type uh, madness, or I don't even know if this will, this is Willy Woo, but this is very interesting as well. Also going to kind of help around out the case that we just described. But basically, this is some new. This is this is new from the labs of the fundamental experts, which I think is very, very interesting. And basically what we're looking at here is we're looking at a chart of the market cap versus the realized cap versus the average cap versus the delta cap. I don't really want to explain what, what each and every one of these things are. I think most of them are pretty obvious, but the delta cap might be a, might be a, the less the least obvious, and that is the difference between the realized cap and the average cap. Um, just, you know, there's just a delta of it. That's all. Um, but you, but the, the, the interesting thing here is that we do see when the realized cap and the uh, and the delta cap meet each other, that calls tops. That's the orange and the purple. And when the delta cap and the average cap meet each other, that seems to call bottoms actually pretty damn well. You can see right now, or at least in the past it has, you can see right now that the tops are, are being called perfectly. Um, we got, you know, we got one, two, three. Right now, we're not really anywhere near calling a top, but that's fine because we don't, I mean, you're not going to be calling, oh, fucking obviously, don't need to explain that one. Um, but the bottoms, as far as I'm concerned, are very interesting right here because you do have good confluence right there, right there, and right there with actual lows being called. Now, this is probably a leading indicator, though, because, or sorry, it's, it's more for like the actual bull market starting. And you can see that it doesn't call the low. I mean, it, it does kind of tell you the low over here, but over here it does not get you the low. It gets you the turnaround. It gets you the turnaround, which is perhaps even, per, which is perhaps more important for an investor because you don't want to have your money in, in an asset that's not fucking moving. That's, you know, there's an opportunity cost to that, right? You can see over here that we're nowhere near closing the, the gap of these two. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the turnaround is pretty far away. And if you were in, and actually the article goes on to say, um, or at least extrapolate this area for, forwards that, 
you know, if Bitcoin were to stay around this area, it probably wouldn't be until 2020 um, where, you know, where, where the market does start turn around, which would actually make sense to me. I don't I don't think Bitcoin is getting back above 6000 this year. I think that's very unlikely. Um, could it happen? Sure. But I it's pretty fucking unlikely, man. Um, let's go check out the Bitcoin valuations because this is also very interesting and, and, and also very consistent with what I'm about to show you on my charts. But basically, <laughs> basically they found that the... How do I want to explain this? Um, basically, they found that this dotted line here, which is essentially your 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 average cap, just basically the average your average the average of your market cap has been calling has been like kind of uh, it's it's like it's almost like the lower end of a troll injury band, which calls the lows pretty damn well. Where is that coming in around? It's coming in around you know it'd be right around here which i'd imagine is obviously be uh, above the hi the high of the last of the prior market cycle and that would probably be around that 22 to 23 to 2400 range so again another thing kind of aligning with that you also do see this upper uh, the the upper band here and that would be coming around 90,000 which i'm actually going to go forwards and show you how i think that bitcoin could get there as well which i am a believer in bitcoin long term uh, but also important, you do see all of these other moving, all these other, all, all these other lines, which uh, they're they're all they're all presented down here. I don't want to go through all of them, but basically, the important part to be aware of is that when they all converge, when they all go towards each other, that's typically when mar the market does bottom. When you have all these things co converge on each other, you have an inflection point here, here. You have an inflection point here before the ultimate turnaround. You also have kind of right there, and then also the low of 2014, 2015. Um, and as you can see right now, and the reason why I bring this up is because in the current area, let's bring this over here, you can see that they're not converging on each other. They're actually like splaying out. So again, this would be suggesting, at least as far as, 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 far as I can tell, it would be suggesting that we are ge gearing up for another move down most likely. Um, on like the very high time frames. Remember, we're looking at a lot of we're looking at a lot of huge amount of price action right now. But just wanted to bring that out. All right, so back on to Bitcoin right over here. Um, so now, now let's get to some future projections. Again, um, you know, as far as far as Bitcoin goes, uh, I am a believer in Bitcoin long term, and this is something that is highly, you know. What's what's a good word for this? Highly uh, experimental. I don't. I I'm not making decisions based off this. What is, is what I'm trying to say? But basically, each and every one of these dotted trend lines represents a support trend line. Um, each and every one in Bitcoin's history of a of a parabolic market cycle. You have this first one in 2010 and 2011. It gets broken in 2012 right here. And this same trend line becomes your highs in 2013 and 2014 and 2015 market cycle here. Then we create another support trend line for that next market cycle right here, right here, in 2012 and 2013 supports anchors and then it gets broken in 2014, 2015, and that becomes the highs of our 2017 and 2018 market cycle right here. Then we created another support trend line for this past market cycle that we just played out right here, uh, anchored right here in, uh, on the turnaround and right here on the beginning of your bull market. And that was broken in, 20, in, in November of 2018. Does that become our? Uh, does that become the governing factor of our highs going forwards? Well, maybe. So let's do let's do a projections. Um, you know, it, and this is just saying that it would it, it could be like the potential high, not necessarily it's going there, but you know, like basically think of it as, as like the the upper end of a troll underband, which also doesn't necessarily tell you the side, but so far so good. Um, at the end of the year, uh, beginning of 2020, the the potential high would be around 14,000. I don't even, I don't even think Bitcoin gets past uh, 7,000, half that. Um, tr uh, but here. Let's Let's, let's look at it when it gets to 2022. What about when it's 2022? Now we're at 94,359 and a half. Let's just take it out another year, 23. Where would it be at 23? Uh, right here. And you can see that Bitcoin is around, you know, potentially 260,000. Do I think Bitcoin gets to 260,000? No, I don't. I don't think it's going to be anywhere near 260,000 in 2023. But I, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, the potential is there. And, you know, you can just extrapolate this further and further. And as Bitcoin's market cycle, as Bitcoin get, becomes more mature, its market cycles will elongate as more people are involved in the market. It'll take longer. So these bull market cycles will, you know, will, will likely, you know, be something way more out here. Again, I'm just, I'm, this is an example. I'm not saying it's 2024, to be very clear. Uh, it would be some out here, which you can see that the potential is significant. I mean, this would this is literally like 600,000. I do I believe that Bitcoin's going to get 600,000 by 2024 in January? I I'm, I'm not standing by that one. I'll put it that way. I'll put it that way. Um, we also do have some interesting as well. 
but you know just keep in mind that 90,000 number basically basically very synonymous with what we looked at over here on the top uh, band um, going back to the BLX index we do have some interesting as well with regards to these descending trend lines right this descending trend line right here is related to this descending trend line right here why because it holds in that first consolidation before the bull trap of that market cycle, which was then caught by this next trend line, you know, this trend line over here, which caught that bull trap. But it, you know, if we were to put on the MVT signal, it was it was the it was it was the consolidation before the breakout before that first, you know, that 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 uh, that that next dead cat bounce signal essentially. Anyways, the reason why this is relevant is because after it broke out of this guy, it actually bases on it and it never goes lower. It never never goes lower, bro, after that, which was right here in uh, on, on a spike low and right here on another spike low, your ultimate low on the 86 Fibonacci retracement. Well, look at the same the same trend line. We've actually based off of it once at the th at the 3100 level. And if we and if we can extrapolate it going forwards and kind of look at the other perhaps downside targets, we can come up with some with some dates for this perhaps. And you could see that if we were to get down to that you know low two thousands area, that would suggest actually a timing you know late this month, late this month. Now, do I believe that's going to happen? I mean, I mean it could just be like a quick wick, you know. I mean, it, well, that's actually yeah, that's actually not right to say because what if you get a wick down here and then it closes above here? You could do, I think that's honestly what I think is going to happen is I think that you're going to, you're going to get like a quick wick down to like 1800 or 1800 ish area and then close above 22 to 2300, like something like that. And now, you know, that would suggest sometime around like, you know, mid to late April. So again, do I put that much weight on this? I mean, it's fun to look at, but I should also mention that this, that this secondary descending trend line that actually once Bitcoin breaks above that, that is the beginning of your bull market right here. You can do the same thing for the prior mark cycles as well. You have the same thing right here. You know, you break above it. That's begin that's the beginning of your bull mark cycle. Um, and you can do maybe the same thing over here. So maybe come up with a date for it actually turning around. Which again, the price action would still be around twenty three hundred, but it would be like the earliest indication, perhaps, and it might be end of year. But again, price action would still literally be like well below six thousand, well below maybe even three thousand. Um, that I don't, I, I don't know if I stand by that. It's just, I think it's just interesting to look at fundamentally masturbate about, you know, blue brains, very, very bad for your health. So okay, keep your mental masturbation, um, you know, clear and direct and typically with lubrication. Um, okay. So back now over here for Mr. Bitcoin, I think I've covered up everything that I want to say on Mr. Bitcoin. Basically, literally in this, in the last hour that I've been speaking, it's moved $2. Two fucking dollars. Now, let me remind you the last time that we actually did something like this, you know, uh, like like a, more than a week of sideways, essentially, was here after. Remember this pump up? You know, it, I think we had like some sort of tether scare. Uh, Bitcoin pumped up and then gave up pretty much all of its gains and went sideways for about two weeks, a week and a half, two weeks. I mean, that's kind of what this feels like over here, you know, pump and then no follow through. It's, it's you know, could it take a lug up? Yeah, sure. I mean. I just don't, I, I guess I'm not, I just, I guess my main point is that I'm just not too concerned because there's going to be a big trade likely to the downside relatively soon. I don't believe that the lows are in. So whether it's here, you know, I, I, I believe it's, it's worth trying out a trade right now, uh, or at least, sorry, not right now, not at this price point. I've, I've entered from much higher. Um, and it's also not a full position. I'll, I want to add on an actual break of 30. What I'm more, what I'm more happy to do is add on a break of 3530. Um, but you know, it's, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to try a position here. And then also, you know, somewhere around the 4,000 mark. That's, uh, that's initially, you know, my plan. Um, and you know, m managing risk on this trade is pretty damn easy. I mean, I'm lucky to be in, in the position that I am right now because on this trade, you know, my stop loss is essentially in profit. So it's, I mean, it sounds so fucking, I hate it when fucking, crypto twitter people say that it's like stop doubt and profit all good it's like whatever man yeah most of the time when i get stopped out i'm not in profit i'll put it that way i want to be very open and honest man most when i get stopped out like the goal is to not be in profit because i want to make sure that this trade is not going to go in my direction now that's what i need to that's what i need to risk to find out um, okay, we can go over alts really quickly now. Uh, XRP, Mr. Ripple's nipples, closing below all major moving averages yesterday. Uh, not looking too healthy right here. Uh, daily stokes are are coiling up and are and are losing momentum. So fair enough. You know, if, if it does get back above thirty and a half cents, thirty one cents. I mean, this thing can run all the way to forty uh, thirty four and a half cents. You do have this nice uh, symmetrical triangle right here. The measure move would be somewhere around this range. However, as long as you're both below 34 and a half cents, nothing's really changed. It's just going to be 
this could be more nothing. If you do break to the downside, obviously by the same token, then bad. <laughs> 20, uh, 28, 28 cents this year to hold. So it's actually got some nice buffer right there. Stellar, Stellar Rumens. Uh, Stellar Lumens, actually the one of the only ones that I think actually does look like it wants to kind of bounce up a little bit more. <laughs> it's got beat up so much, but you, you actually look, you actually see the same signature on Stellar that you do on pretty much everything else right now. Basically consolidating it in like some sort of a triangular formation over here and then breaking it down. Um, perhaps a harbinger of despair. Uh, let's go look at, um, what are the other ones? We can look at Bcash uh, really quick. He basically looks, where is he? There he is. Yeah, Bcash doing the same thing as Bitcoin, but a little bit weaker, you know, below all major moving averages here. Same, you know, same thing, basically. Um, what else do we have? We have uh, NEO. Uh, NEO taking a leg up. Okay, is that gonna be a signal for Bitcoin? Could that be a signal for Bitcoin? Uh, not taking out this resistance, so that is the critical area to be aware of, with this resistance being about 950. Um, but this is interesting to me. This is interesting that that Neo is actually taking a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a of a leg. Do we have new highs here? 869. Yeah, 885. We do. We do. Obviously, this is the big the big resistance to beat 930. But uh, if you can beat 930 for Neo, then this thing can run all the way to 13. dollars Put it actually right here. So we'll get that in so, somewhere around this 13 dollar mark. Let's go look at Mrs. Litecoin and Mr. Buterall, and then, we'll, and then we'll start to wrap this bitch up. Uh, Mrs. Litecoin, um, holding above the 10 simple, it's very resilient right here. Very resilient. It wants to, it, this, Mrs. Litecoin is the best, is the best case for Bitcoin make, uh, making another run for it right now. Yes, you are right at resistance. You are right at this horizontal resistance at 43 and, uh, 43 and a half, but it, it looks like it wants to go. It looks like it wants to go. Uh, Daily Stokes, Still coming down, losing momentum though. They are losing momentum. What about four hour? Four hour stokes actually just crossed down. What about eight hour stokes? Eight hour stokes still get still headed up. Ten hour stokes, they're still headed up. What about two hour? Two hour are down. Okay, so very low time frames and very high time frames for the down, but medium time frames are up. Uh, if this one takes out this area, it's gonna it's gonna have another run at the prior high at forty seven. <clears throat> I mean, not like prior highs, like 400, but like, you know, the prior high of this, uh, of this run over here, but as long as you're below 47 and a half and, and more, and, and more conservatively, like 50 and a half dollars, not really anything too, too interesting, um, from a higher time from perspective, just more, you know, as long as you're operating below this, this kind of block, uh, still overall in, in the heavy grips of bear market territory. Let's go look at Mr. Buterall. How's Mr. Butter Buttersworth doing? I see that he's up a little bit right now, looking like he wants to take another leg up too. He do, this one looks like it wants to go up. It does look like it wants to go up. Uh, daily closed above this ascending trend line. It's very low volume, extremely low volume yesterday, but it did close above. Now, daily stokes are snaking around. They want they they look like they want to go up. If Mr. Buterall closes the day here or higher, uh, twelve hour looks twelve hours difficult. Um, 12, I, I think 12 hours more positive things than negative things. So yeah, if I'm looking at Mr. Buterall, I'd be I'd be a little bit more bullish. Uh, four hour golden cross, and it is still it's still kind of grinding its way around here. If if you t if Mr. Buterall closes a four hour dildo above 126, uh, I I I think this one's probably gonna run. It's probably gonna run. Uh, I don't see anything stopping you from where. I mean 135, and you know if things get crazy, 145. I, and I would think uh, my, my opinion would be 145. You see Bitcoin at 4,000. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Um, so again, ooh, Bitcoin rallied another $2. Big deal. Um, so yeah, All right, guys, to start to wrap up the most important things about Bitcoin. Of course, you know, don't, again, I don't trade my opinion. I trade technical analysis. What What's the technical analysis saying? As long as you're above 35.30, hard to be bearish. As long as you're below 35 or 36.50, hard to be bullish. If you break above 36. Technically, you know, you do have resistance at 38.50, but I, my opinion is that you probably run all the way to 4,000. By the same token, if you do break 30, uh, 35.30 uh, to the downside, probably revisiting your prior lows. Although, yes, you do have support somewhere right around 34.80 or something like that, 34.50. Uh, but at that point in time, you know, I'd be thinking like breakage of the overall formation to the downside rather than... <clears throat> rather than anything else. So that's going to do it for today. Hope this one finds you well. Again, another long-term analysis video in the books. Hope you had fun on this one. A few new things uh, to be aware of. And overall, uh, I hope that the message is clear that overall I am bearish. It's just a question of does does the next big high get put in here or do we get a little bit of a run beforehand? Um, both ways, you know, again, you're never going to you're never gonna fucking know 100% for sure. I can only present the case and then come up with statistical probabilities and then make trades based off those. And that's how you can be successful over a long period of time is just find 
finding those good statistical setups. So if this trade does not work, if 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 Bitcoin gets back above, I mean, really even thirty six hundred, but really six thirty six fifty, more importantly speaking, um, you know, for, for for like the overall picture, then it's gonna be it's gonna be time to hold the horses for a little bit. Uh, okay, so that's gonna do it for today. Hope this one finds you well. Again, wishing you well on this Sunday, and also please do if uh, if you are you know if you're if you make videos or you're new or you just know your shit when it comes to uh, to audio videos. Hey, feel free to reach out, reach out. I'm always looking for upgrades on uh, on this video, so uh, so I'd be I'd be looking forward to that. All right, anyways, uh, I'm gonna be signing off now. I'm gonna go eat some food and drink some coffee. Looking forward to see you guys soon. Take care.